Now, imagine that instead of having a two-period budget constraint, we have an infinite period budget constraint. That is, we discount infinite outputs in the future, and we also discount infinite consumption in the future for infinite periods. We still have the first bond here as a source of funds, but we do not have any last bond because there is no end. It's infinite. Now, we can have shocks in the production function, or we can have uh, changes in the interest rate, and uh, those shocks could be permanent or temporary, and also the shocks in production function could be parallel or uh, proportional. If the shock was permanent, the income effect will be strong. That is, you consume it all. Why? Because you know that you will have uh, more income in every single period of the future, so uh, you will just increase your consumption. But instead, if it was temporary, uh, then the income effect will be weak. That is, you save it all. You know that this boost in income is just going to be for this period, so next period you will still have nothing more. You have the same level of income as before, so you are better off saving it for tomorrow when things get back to normal. I see this like uh, winning the lottery that you are better off saving it all because uh, you will not get get more income permanently but this permanent shift is like uh, getting a new job that pays you a lot of money well you just can start consuming more because you will have more income in the future. If the shock is permanent, that is, you consume it all, then your marginal propensity to consume uh, will be one. You will consume it all. But it, it, your your marginal propensity to save is actually close to, close to zero. So you don't save. If it's temporary, then your marginal propensity to consume is zero, and uh, you save it all. Your marginal propensity to, to save is almost equal to one. That is, you save all the increase in income, because it's temporary. Now, imagine we have a shock in the production function, and that shock is parallel. If it was also permanent, then the income effect will be strong. That is, you will increase consumption at every period, and uh, you will increase leisure and decrease the workload at every period of time. So you will be consuming more and working less forever so you won't save anything. There will be low activity in the credit market. Instead, if the shock was temporary, then the income effect will be weak. Because yes, you have an increase in consumption at this period, which is small, and you also have a decrease in leisure in this period, which is also small. And they are so small that basically all the increase in uh, income, you're saving it for the future. So there is a high activity in the credit market and uh, people basically go there because they know it's a temporary shock and they want to smoothen their consumption path in the future. That is why they save more and buy more bonds.